Let me show you how to use generative fill on a moving video clip in this practical example. With Adobe Photoshop Beta and After Effects, I'm gonna take this clip and add a couple elements to the wall. Let's say, for example, this video clip needs a window on the wall for narrative purposes. We could accomplish this using generative fill and After Effects. This technology just keeps getting better and can solve a lot of problems in post. Before we get started, speaking of cutting edge tech, I wanna talk for a second about this video enhancer by Hitpaw. This tool takes a spotlight with this AI powered wizardry turning ordinary videos into extraordinary visual experiences. But don't just take my word for it, let's see it in action. This baby's all about using AI to effortlessly amp up your video quality. No more pixelated blah videos. Picture this, your video's going from regular to mind-blowingly sharp, even up to 8K. We're talking about features like denoise, animation, face enhancement, colorize, and more. It's like a magic wand for your videos. This enhancer tailors its mojo to whatever you're filming. So get ready for colors that pop and details that stun. So, are you ready to give your videos the VIP treatment? Well, check the link below and try out this HitPaw video enhancer. So hit that link below and your path to 4K and beyond starts now. Get ready to make your pixels dance. So now, back to our project. So I'm in After Effects and I have my moving clip that pushes from wide to close up. I'll start out at the final closest frame for the best possible resolution for my gen fill layer. And I'll export that frame to Photoshop by navigating to Composition, Save Frame As, Photoshop Layer. Now we'll jump to Photoshop Beta with this PSD. And I'll select a portion of my camera right for my window, and I'll hit Generative Fill. And I'll type in Large Dilapidated Window. So the more specific you can be in your prompts, the better results you'll get. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. So now let's save. Now I'll jump back into After Effects, but before I do, if you're finding this video helpful, then hit that like button so it can spread to more creators like you. So I'll find my window layer in my PSD dropdown in my project panel, and I'll drag it right onto my video comp on the top. So now obviously looking at this, the camera movement needs to be tracked. You could do this within After Effects, but I personally like using Mocha AE, the built-in tracking plugin that comes with After Effects. I find it much more precise and user-friendly. So I'll select my main clip, and I'll navigate to Animation, Track in Boris FX Mocha, and I'll click the Mocha icon in my Effects Control Panel, and that'll take me to Mocha AE. So now I'm in Mocha AE, and I'll select what looks like the Pen Tool up here. It's called the X-Spline Tool, and I'll select a few points that are high in contrast and have enough information inside of it for a really good track. So when I'm all set with that, I'll click on Show Surface, and you'll see this blue box within the tracking points. We wanna align this with our comp so our tracking data is much easier to apply since it will be the same proportions of our comp. So I'll select Align Surface and you'll see the blue box moves to the edges of the comp. Now from here, since I'm on the last frame of the clip, I actually have to track backwards instead of forward. So I'll click Track Backwards. And you can see it's pretty much perfect. So now let's save. And we'll close out of Mocha now. And we'll jump right back to After Effects. So now in my Effect Controls panel, I'll drop down my tracking data. And I'll click on Create Track Data. And my Layer 1 is selected, I'll hit OK. And under Layer Export To, I'll pick my Window Layer, and I'll hit Apply Export. Now since the proportions are the same, it should stay in position and track perfectly within that tracking data. And that's how it's done. So if you wanted to add more to this scene, you just create more track layers in Mocha AE and do the same thing. So that's how it's done. Obviously every video clip is different and when you get into other shots like gimbal footage and drone footage where the objects and surfaces are more three dimensional, then using generative fill typically isn't the best option. But nonetheless, there's still a ton you could use it on. If you wanna check out some of my other videos using generative fill, then check the links below. Thanks for watching guys. Hope this video helps your videos in the future. See you next time.